technologist, science communicator, right here in the University of Ottawa. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am well. This is not this is not considered a whole new um, variant, is it? This is a this is a almost a uh, derivative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these things are popping up all over the place, and only some of them make the media. Uh, many of them just go away. Right? So yeah. it's always premature to worry about it until we see a substantial number of cases where we live, and if we see it affecting our population in an untoward manner. Is the concern that, A, the transmissibility, and number two, how effective would the vaccine be? Again? Yeah, so the way we uh, categorize these variants, there are three categories. There are variants of interest, variants of concern, and variants of high consequence. And the categorization is based on our ability to detect cases, our ability to prevent cases, and our ability to treat cases. So if, you, if, we, if we suspect that it's compromising one of those things, it's a variant of interest. If we know it's doing so, it's a variant of concern. And if it's doing so to high effect, then it's a variant of high consequence. So far, we've seen no variants of high consequence. That's great news, which means our vaccines work pretty well on all the variants. And this so far, I don't even know if it qualifies as a variant of interest yet. I'm not sure what, how it's been categorized, but it's not a variant of concern. So I'm not concerned until it is. How concerned are you about what's happening in Ottawa and in the province as we go on, you know, on hold for uh, further reopening and then warnings, uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, we either, you know, have to raise an eyebrow and say, you know, we could get serious again, or we're, n we're not going to go backwards and put capacity limitations back in. Where, where do you stand on all the discussion of this, la this last I, week? I think context is important. And by context, yeah. I mean compare ourselves to where we were a year ago. And we're a much bet better position now than we were a year ago for a number of reasons. Number one, of course, vaccination. Number two is we understand this disease much better. So we know how to control it. We know how to prevent it. We have the tools to do so. And we are using them to a high degree. So. I think um, it's unlikely, highly unlikely, we're going to see a lockdown ever again in this pandemic because we know how to prevent it. What we need to do is uh, apply the current restrictions better. So we have vaccine passports, but often they're not enforced. We have requirements for masking, but often people aren't wearing their mask well or they're wearing poor quality masks. So if you just do those things better, I think we're much better uh, stead. And we can throw in things like good ventilation in places like schools and use rapid tests to a higher extent than we are doing so right now. And I have every confidence that this will be well contained. So I just want to zero in a bit more there. So it's basically those who are bending the rules or not following the rules who are responsible for the numbers going up. And it isn't because suddenly we're sitting closer to someone <laughs> in a restaurant with more people. Uh, no, I'm not, not, not what I'm saying. A number of factors could be causing the increase in cases. Okay. They include the fact that the border is open, the fact that we have more people in restaurants and so forth. Uh, we include the, the activities over Halloween, people having Halloween parties causing a spike in cases. And it includes a laxity when it comes to following the public health guidelines. I mean, people aren't wearing masks as much as they used to, and they're not You're doing right. so as diligently as they used to. And I've um, been asked for my vaccine passport exactly once so far from going out. So. I, wow. I, so <laughs> what does this all mean? Uh, and when I was asked for it, by the way, it was barely looked at. So um, uh, I think there's something to be said for diligence in following the public health guidelines so that we don't have to take further steps down the road. How many times have you gone out where you expected to be asked for your passport? <laughs> well, that's a loaded question. Twice, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm just doing my job, Dr. Ray. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> and I remember you, the clue is you got a young child at home. Yeah. How often did you get out? <laughs> yeah, but in both those cases, <laughs> yes. it was pretty lax. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not scientific, but it's definitely a good sample because it can, damage can still be done. Yeah, it's right. true. It's true. And I hear stories right. all the time. People complain to me that I, you know, I went to this place and they didn't even look look at my ID or my vaccine passport. And I don't really know um, exactly to what extent that is a problem. I don't know. I think the masking is a larger problem. Uh, I, I do see some lax wearing good masks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but again, I, I think we've got a good handle on this if we just follow the rules that are currently in place and don't get carried away and assume that the crisis is over because it isn't over. Um, it will be over, and we're getting closer to making it over as more people accept vaccination and third doses become a reality, and the 5 to 11s become eligible, as they will be very, very soon, and that's going to change the situation dramatically. Let's talk about the risk of the unvaccinated getting COVID. It used to be 20 times greater if you were unvaccinated. It's now down to about six or seven. What's happening there? Uh, a number of things. One is better data. Two is different data. Three is... Uh, the waning uh, effectiveness of vaccination, 
But let's explain what that means. It doesn't mean the vaccines aren't working. The vaccines do two things. They prevent infection and they prevent serious disease. It's always expected that they would diminish their ability to prevent infection. But their ability to prevent serious disease is maintained at a very high level and might even be lifetime. We don't know yet. So this is where the third doses come in. Uh, third doses will probably ratchet up that ability to prevent infection to a very high degree again and diminish transmission to a very high degree. And then we're back you know, with the uh, hyper-powerful vaccination regimen that we had before. So I wouldn't get overly concerned about that number. Hey, Dr. Ray, Health Canada just releasing information. They've authorized the use of the Moderna Spike Vax. COVID-19 vaccine is a booster shot. Okay, fantastic. That's another weapon, another weapon, huh? Yeah, and that's a great yeah. vaccine. I don't know why people don't like it. It's actually my favorite one. I have a favorite one. Because uh, <laughs> Dolly Parton paid for it. So that's my favorite. <laughs> yes, and you will always love her. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. <laughs> well, that's, that's good news, though, right? Because this is authorized for 18 and older uh, to be used at, at least six months after the individual has completed their primary vaccine series. I mean, this, this is half the dose of the regular vaccine. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reading the release from Health Canada. Evidence continues to show that being fully vaccinated provides strong protection against serious illness. We knew that already. <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot new here. It comes down to, look, almost every vaccine that we experience in a regular uh, schedule for vaccination is a three-dose vaccine, three or more. So we should expect boosters. It's not un unreasonable. The question is, I wonder why they're doing why doing it half the doses though. I don't know. They probably just found out that, that you don't need as much to get that same response. Vaccination right. is a, it's a it's an art as much as a science. You know, you got to play around the fringes and figure out exactly how much dosage you need. All right, Dr. Ray, also almost smarter after I talk to you. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. And also, I like your humor. That's <laughs> the whole of this. Thing. <laughs> Happy Diwali. You celebrate? Uh, in theory, I do. <laughs> okay. I eat the food. <laughs> there you. Oh, I always appreciate your candors, too. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Ray, what?